Um, you know, today I wanted to spend some time talking about the importance of remembering, and that's actually the, the title uh, for the lesson today, and that is the, um, Stacking Stones, the Importance of Remembering. Right, but before we get to, get to that, I, most of you know that, that, that tomorrow is Memorial Day, right? So um, I want to make sure that we take the time to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country, in defense of our freedoms. I want to thank the families and the friends of those brave souls who gave all. You know, Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day. It's a day of remembrance for those who have died in service uh, to our country. It's, a, it's observed every year on the, the last Monday of May, and it originated following the Civil War. And it was to commemorate both Union and Confederate soldiers who died during our country's civil war at that time. You know, that war claimed more than 500,000 Americans. Man, let that sink in. You know, today Memorial Day has been extended to honor all Americans who have died in military service. Now, the problem for me with this holiday is that most people, they don't really give it the weight that it deserves, right? They look at it as the beginning of summer. Um, they look at it as, you know, it's a time for white sales at Macy's. Um, it's a time to grill hot dogs and, and have a beer and stuff. And that's, and that's all fine, but we really need to take the time to give this, give this day the, the weight that it deserves, right? It carries the importance of remembering. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for all the people that are here. And I pray, Lord, that you open up our hearts and our minds, not only to today's message, but also, Lord, I just pray that, you, that you're with all of us. Help us to commemorate and remember those who, who gave it all in service to our country, who fought for our freedoms, who died for our freedoms, Lord. We thank you so much for those brave souls, and we thank you to the families. We're, we're praying for the families of those um, servicemen as well. And Lord, as we, as, we, as we move on also through this lesson, this lesson that's on the importance of remembering, Lord, be with, be with me. Help me to get your words across in an amazing way. Help me to use a, an, an Old Testament story to, to drive home a, 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 a point and a fact and, and a truth uh, that, that still applies today. And Lord, we thank you so much for that. We thank you so much for your clear word and your clear direction in the Bible. Um, and again, Lord, I thank you for all the people here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You know, the ability to remember is a very funny thing, isn't it? You know, like I can personally, I can remember song lyrics from stuff that I, that I listened to in high school and haven't heard since. I mean, high school, come on, that's like, what, 10 years ago. <laughs> okay, maybe 35. <laughs> but it, I mean, it's, it's weird. I can, I, can, I can still remember the lyrics to some obscure like Peter Gabriel song. Who I didn't even like all that much, but I can still remember all of them. But I'm in my house and I go from room to a room and I walk in and I'm like, all right. <laughs> What am I doing here? I hate that. You know, does that happen to anybody else? Come on. Somebody's got to be. Thank you. Thank you. Right. But the other day, this is awesome. I think it was yesterday. I think I walked into a room and I actually remembered exactly why I was there. It was amazing. Yeah, it was the bathroom. But um, <laughs> hey, small victories, you know, I'll take them when I can get them. All right. So again, the title for today's lesson is Stacking Stones, The Importance of Remembering. And as I was studying for this lesson, I came across a great statement. I'd heard it years ago, but it really applied to this. And I, want, and I put it on a slide. I want you to read it here. It says, it's important to remember because we panic in a crisis and we forget in the good times. We panic in a crisis and we forget in the good times. You know, God knows that we often forget what he has done for us what he is doing for us, and what he has promised to do for us in the future. You know, so today uh, we're going to look at a pivotal event in the history of the Old Testament. This is one of the climactic events um, in biblical history. It's as the Israelites first step foot on the promised land, right? In this, story, in this story, God directs the Israelites to stack stones as a memorial. Now, the definition of the Hebrew word for memorial, which we're going to see in verse 7 today, is to remember, Right? And given our propensity to forget, it's no wonder that, that memorials have often played an important role uh, throughout the Bible. Now, this story comes out of the book of Joshua. It comes out of Joshua chapter 4. So this is after the Exodus, and it's right at the end of their 40 years of wandering in the desert. Right? So they have, they, have, they have come, and they have arrived at the Jordan River. They're right at the Jordan, and right on the other side of the Jordan is the Promised Land. It was right there. The thing is, they arrived at the Jordan, um, the, the Bible tells us, during harvest time. And during harvest time is when the Jordan River is running bank to bank. In fact, the Bible even tells us it was overflowing its banks. So the Jordan was all but impa impa impassable, right? But God had promised that when they got to the other side, 
that the, that the Israelites were going to, they were going to dispossess that land of the, of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, the Girgashite, the Amorite, the Jebusite. I practiced that for a while and I still had to look at them. That's a lot of ites, right? But they arrived there, like I said, at harvest time and it was overflowing its banks. But God had a plan. Doesn't God always have a plan? And that was awesome. Right? So he told Joshua to have the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant to walk into the river first. And when they did this, the Bible tells us that the waters that were rushing down the, the Jordan stood up and stacked up for miles back. Right? And, it, and, and when it did that, it, it created a pass for the Israelites to walk across, get this, on dry ground. So this raging river stacks up like this, and it creates a pass for the Israelites to walk across on dry ground. Not a muddy mess. They didn't have to slog through that. You know, I think there's a lesson in that as well, but that's for another time. We've got places to go today. So we're going to pick up from right there. So hopefully you brought your Bible today. Um, here at Unleashed, we, we really encourage you that, that Sunday is, you know, is not the only day that you should be opening up God's Word. You should be in God's Word every single day. And if you don't have a Bible, we've got some free Bibles at the, at the Resource Center. So if you need one, please stop by uh, the Resource Center after service and just say, hey, I'd like a free Bible, and bam, they'll just, they'll just hand you one. So right now we're going we're gonna to start, um, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. And this, is, um, this is Joshua 4, and I've got the verses up here on the screen as well. It says, now when all the nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, take for yourselves 12 men from the people, one man from each tribe and command them saying, take up for yourselves 12 stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet are standing firm and carry them over with you and lay them down in the lodging place where you will lodge tonight. So Joshua called the 12 men whom he had appointed from the sons of Israel, one man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, cross again to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. And each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the son of Israel. Let this be a sign among you, so that when your children ask later, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall say to them, because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So, so these stones shall become a memorial to the sons of Israel forever. All right, so notice that in, according to verse 1, that, that after everyone had crossed, everyone but the priest carrying the ark, that the Lord gave more specific instructions to Joshua, right? He said, you know, go pick 12 guys and go pick up 12 stones. Not little rocks, but, but stones big enough. These guys had to carry these things on their shoulders, and he wants you to take them out of the Jordan to where they would set up camp that night and build a memorial. Now, as we read just, those, the, just the stuff in that one through seven in the text, we see three reasons why this stack of stones was to be a reminder of what God had done, which is the first point on your lesson plan there. So if you, inside your program, if you'll find the, the lesson plan, um, and at the bottom there, you'll see that, that that first note there says they are a reminder of what God has done. In the text we just read, verse 7 says that these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So first, the memorial stones were to be to a reminder of their own personal experience. And you notice in verse 6 that the memorial will cause the children to ask them a question. What do these stones mean to you? Right? These stones were, first of all, a reminder of those who were present of their personal experience, what they saw, what they heard, what they felt. So in other words, they're saying, tell your story. Keep a clear memory of what God did for you. Keep on telling your story so that you never lose your own sense of awe and wonder at what God has done in your life. You know, I want you to consider this with me. Consider that statement. What kind of memories do you have in your life? You know, whether you realize it or not, we all have memorials in our life. And probably not monuments of stone, but monuments built of memories. Memories of what God has done in and through our lives. And these memories are places, they're, they're, they're people, they're experiences that have shaped us through what God has done. Significant places in your life can definitely elicit memories. Can't they? I mean, can you think of different places that, that, that elicit these memories of what God has done in and through your life? You know, for me, as I was thinking about this, there's, there's one, and, and you'll, you'll see why here in a sec, there's one that really comes to mind. And that's this, back in 1989, when Kathy and I first got married, um, I was able to uh, help Kathy's dad, Jack, renovate this, this little house 
Um, it was going to be our first house together um, out on Craycroft and 25th. That's a heck of a neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> but we got to renovate this house in the, in, the summer of, in the summer of 89. And I got to do that with Kathy's dad. Now that, you know, that, that in itself was, was an amazing time, but, but it really hit home recently. Because as many of you know, Kathy's, Kathy's dad passed away on, on uh, May 9th, so just a, a few weeks ago. You know, and, and, and over the years, I mean, he's such a, an amazing, kind-hearted man. Over the years, you know, many times I've driven by that house. And I thank God, I thank God for the, the memories that we made in that, in that tiny little place. You know, and there's, there's other places too. You know, like this church, this church building is something that, that, that I just, I thank God every day for, for everything that has happened here. You know, this is, it's the place that I saw my own faith grow into a ministry. It's the place that God has chosen to, to demonstrate his love in and through my life and in and through the lives of, of so, many other, so many other people. And you no doubt have places in your life that, that elicit the same kinds of memories. For me, the Pine Top, Arizona is a place. And Kathy and I, that's where we first found out that, we were, that we, Kathy was pregnant with Courtney, right? Uh, places like that will elicit memories. So we, so we build monuments on, on places, but we also build monuments of memories of people. And these are memories of people who God has used in our life, right? Every day I do my best to, to thank God for my wife and my children. I thank him for my family. My family have been such an amazing blessing to me. So I thank him so much for that. I thank him for the church family, you guys. I thank him for the church family that God has blessed me with. I even thank him for Pastor Juan. <laughs> I do. Man, I, he, Juan, is, he's like a brother to me. Sometimes an, an annoying little brother, but Juan, is like, he's like a brother to me. He's, he's, he's a mentor, and he's somebody that I, that I thank God for bringing into my life. Well, I, we all have memories of... of of the people God has chosen to impact our lives. But how many times do we take the time to sit down and think about that and pray about that and, and truly thank God for those people? And then there are the memories of experiences, right? Of God answering prayer, of God's amazing grace, of his peace and his comfort, of all that he has done for me and for us personally. The amazing victories and blessings, as well as the peace and comfort in the hard times. You know, I thank God for the experience of this and the fact that I get to do this. I get to stand up here right now and I get to share his word with you. I love that. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing experience. We'll see how we do. <laughs> right? I thank him for his strength and his power in the good times. And I thank him for his strength and the power through the stuff that I could not, could not have handled on my own. I thank him for the time that, that, that he was there with me at the, at the passing of my own dad, right? I thank him for, for being there you know, with us when, when Colton was born. You guys know Colton. Colton's going to be back soon. I'm going to pick him up in, in late June. He'll be back here for, for July. And if this stands, yeah, buddy. All right. It's really first service, I couldn't, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so I put him down one. But I think, you know, Colton, I don't know if you guys know this, but when Colton was born, and you might not, because it's, we don't talk about it a whole lot. When Colton was born, he was five weeks premature. He was um, breech, and he had the, the, the cord wrapped around his head or neck or <laughs> whatever. So he, he's been a pain since the get, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, it was an emergency C-section at like two o'clock in the morning, and I was on my knees praying God to get me through that. But that experience is what helped shape my relationship with God. I wasn't even a, a, a practicing Christian. I thought I was a Christian because I was an American. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> but anyway, so those experiences are stuff that, that we, need, we need to remember, right? And the point is that God knows how we think and how we forget. And that's the reason he instructs Joshua to build a memorial. So that each time that the Israelites saw it, they would, they would be reminded that they had not crossed the Jordan on their own ability, on their own strength, right? But because of God's ability and God's strength. And so I challenge you to spend some time thinking about your memorial stones, right? Let them draw you closer to God, remind you of his faithfulness. 
So in the text, secondly, we see that the memorial stones were, were to be a, a basis of sharing faith with their children, a reminder to the next generation of what God had done. So in two places in this chapter, parents are reminded of their responsibility for communicating God's word and his direction in the lives of their children from generation to generation. We saw it first in verse 6 and 7, right, what we just read, but again in verses 21 through 23. So check that out. We'll put that up on the screen as well. And he says, he said to the sons of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in, in, the, in time of coming, saying, what are these stones? Then you shall inform your children, saying, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed, just as the Lord your God had done to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed. Right? As with other memorials in the Old Testament, the intention of the memorial was to provoke questioning, especially from future generations. You know, it's been said that Christianity is never more than one gener generation away from extinction. I've heard that quote several times over the years. Have you guys heard that, 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 that idea? And so because I've heard it so much, I researched its, its origin. And it appears to have its roots in a quote by the, by the late President Ronald Reagan. Two Reagan references and one teaching. All right. <laughs> All right. So Ronnie said this. This is an amazing statement. It's up there on the screen too. It says, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. It's an amazing statement. Now, President Reagan was talking about physical freedoms, right? But it is certainly applicable to Christianity as well. You know, if we're not careful, America very, very well could be exhibit A for this truth. You know, just think about it for a moment. How far her country has drifted from its foundation in just one generation. We've completely removed God from, from politics in our schools. Yet he's the first one to get the, get the blame after a tragedy. You know, we're told in polite society we're not supposed to discuss politics or religion. But look where that has gotten us. Right? I don't know why that it's polite not to talk about our faith or talk about how we feel, how our country should be run as far as morals and that kind of stuff. Right? It's up to us to share God's truth and direction in love with our children. This memorial, God's direction to the Israel to create this memorial and be ready to discuss it was to make sure that the environment of the secular society that they were going to be surrounded by, remember all the other ites? So the, God's direction on this was to make sure that that environment would not dictate their values. And it's up to us to do the same. As I was going through this this morning, another verse just came to me. It's not in, the, not in your notes if you want to write this down. Check out another verse in here that, that just really plays right to that. It's, it's um, 1 Peter 3.15. says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. That's what we're called to do. And the third thing that, that these memorial stones were, were to be a signpost to a lost world. And we see that in, in verse 24 in our text. So if you take a look at verse 24. 24 says that all the peoples of the earth may know that the, land, that the hand of the Lord is mighty so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. I love that. It has always been God's plan that the whole world should know that he is the one true God. Not only was the crossing of the Jordan an amazing event uh, for Israel, but it was also a terrifying event for the people living in the land of Canaan. Remember all the ites, right? That memorial served as a warning and a reminder of the strength of God and his people. So that stack of stones, not only was it a time for remembering what God had done, I believe it was a reminder to renew personal commitment, which is the next thing on your note there. If you turn your notes over, the next thing is this reminder of, is a reminder to renew personal commitment. You know, verse 8 tells us that the Israelites did as Joshua commanded. They, they picked up the stones and they brought them out of the river. But not only did Joshua issue the order for the men to go back in and pick up those stones, he personally joined them in the middle of the Jordan. But when he did it, he did something else on his own. We see that in verse 9 of our text. 
It says, Then Joshua set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan at the place where the feet of the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. And they are there to this day. It's kind of a neat verse, right? And now if, if you have the time or if you have insomnia and you want to check out and research the controversy over this verse, it's awesome. Because no one really gets a handle on it. No one really understands why Joshua went back because that's not what God said. Right? No one understands why Joshua went, went back and, and made his own mo memorial. And so there's, there's stuff all over the board on this. They're talking about, well, he didn't, just because he said he went to the middle, maybe he didn't do it, and maybe it's set up on the side so they could still see it, and maybe there's this. And, and they're talking about all these things that, that weren't really there. And I found one commentator said this, and I loved it. He said, a great deal of ingenuity has been wasted over this passage. And then he went on for three paragraphs to explain why it was a waste of time to talk about this passage. I love that. When I get to heaven, I want to talk to Joshua about it and go, why? And he's probably just going to go, oh, to confuse people later. It was, you know, no. So I think Joshua, I think, this is my opinion. I believe, okay, my opinion. You can take this for, for what it's worth, all right? If you don't believe this, more power to you. I believe uh, that Joshua, while the men were carrying their stones back, I think he personally picked up those 12 stones and built a memorial in the riverbed as a personal act of worship, as a reminder to himself to renew his personal commitment to God. I think for Joshua, this was a very private act. And if you think about it, it was a, a very pivotal point in his walk with God. He was about to lead God's people into the promised land. That's monumental. He needed time to commemorate that and to reflect on it. He needed time to thank God for his amazing provision. He needed time to open himself up to God's direction. And when we set up our pile of rocks, it's not only about remembering that all that's God done, it's remembering to renew our personal commitment to him daily in part because of all he's done. Remembrance should inspire renewal. We should strive to wake up every day with a renewed personal commitment to God. Now I say this, and I know that it's not always easy, and I don't, I don't personally always get it right myself. You know, believe me, these past few weeks have been tough on our family. It's been, it's been an emotional roller coaster. And I love roller coasters at an amusement park. <laughs> not in my life. For my family right now, I mean, just... Quick overview. So, so Kathy's dad went into hospice, but all of her siblings and even some of the foster kids came in. So there was these, this low, this high of the amazing family support, right? And then Jack started to, to decline. It's, it's hospice. This is what it was expected. And then we, we had to get together for my dad who passed away. We had to um, get together because we, we bought a tree in his name in a memorial garden. So we had to go through that ceremony. And then Kathy's dad passed. Right? And then Colton came home to be at the, the funeral. You know, all these things. And then Colton had to go back to, to um, Spokane to be with his, his lovely wife, Carolyn, for her senior recital. And the plane situation blew up and he missed it. Right? And so, I mean, it's just this, this constant up and down. But for my family right now, knowing and remembering all that God has seen us through and keeping us accountable to it, renewing our commitment daily has been the difference between surviving and thriving. So I encourage you, stack your stones. All right, back to our text. Once the 12 men carried the 12 stones to the shore of Canaan, and after Joshua had built his altar in the middle of the river, he commanded the priest to finish crossing the Jordan uh, with, the, with the Ark of the Covenant. Now we see this in, in, in verses 15 through 18. And it says this, Then on the seventh day, oops, where am I at? Wrong one. Israel is circumcised. Nope, wrong verse. <laughs> All right. He says, Now the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priests who carry the ark of the testimony that they come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. It came about when the priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come up from the middle of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up to the ground, dry ground. The waters of the Jordan returned to their place and went all over its banks as before. What an amazing visual. The moment the priest's the priest feet hit the other side, the wall of water that had been piled up for miles came crashing back into place. And it said it went right where it was and it overflowed the, overflowed the banks and it just right 
on through. I love that visual. And it takes us to the final point today, that, the, that our stack of stones are to be a reminder to forget. I know that's an oxymoron, kind of like jumbo shrimp, right? The stack of stones are a reminder to forget, but it's to forget past defeats. Check out verses 19 through 20 as we continue on in the text. 19 through 20, see, now the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th of the first month, which is very important, and camped at Gilgal, which is important as well, on the eastern edge of Jericho. Those 12 stones which they had taken from the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. Now, it seems pretty plain, but it is so amazing. It's significant that this happened on the 10th day of the first month because that is exactly, exactly 40 years to the day since Israel marched out of Egypt, just as God said. So how cool is that? I love that. But it gets even better because leaving the edge of the river, the Israelites went to a place called Gilgal to set up their camp. And it said Gilgal was on the eastern border of Jericho. The word Gilgal literally means the reproach has been rolled away. Don't miss this. 40 years of spiritual defeat and failure had been rolled away by those rushing waters. It was the dawn of a great new beginning in a new land. The days of hopeless wandering in the wilderness were behind them. They were now a people with a powerful sense of purpose, determined to take new territory with God. And they were able to, at that time, let their past defeats go. You know, the monument that was built with those 12 stones was a visible reminder of the faithfulness of God. It was also a monument to that special day when the people of God boldly placed their feet in the surging, rushing current of the Jordan, confident that God would see them safely to the other side. And likewise, for us as believers today, we should be able to look back and see those monumental occasions which stand out as times when God changed our direction and gave us hope and a new sense of purpose. A time when, by an act of faith, you know, decided to abandon ourselves to God, to put the past in the past and step out and take new territory for him. And this is exactly what happens when we get right with God, when we state our belief in him, when we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, when we get baptized. The rushing waters of the Jordan carried away the Israelites past defeats, right? When we get up out of the water during baptisms, those, those waters do the same things. We, alive, we arise to live a new life, leaving past defeats right where they belong, in the past. Check out one of my favorite verses for this. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Almost there. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. I love that verse. We are new through him. We can, we can let the past stay in the past. You know, our pile of rocks may very well contain remembrances of our failures, but they are remembrances of how God came through through those failures, right? Just as he has promised. Our past defeats may shape who we were, but through Jesus, they no longer define who we are. We can never forget that. I'll say that again. Our past defeats may shape who we were, but through Jesus, they no longer define who we are. And that's what the stack of stones can do. And that takes us to our next step. You know, if you're a Christian, what is your next step? You know, I encourage you, no matter where you are in your relationship with God, stack some stones. Maybe not physically, but mentally. Take time this weekend to remember. Remember all that God has done in and through your life. The people, the places, the experiences that God has etched on your heart. And make the conscious choice daily to renew your personal commitment to Him. And if you're here today and you don't yet have a personal relationship with God, maybe your next step is the first step in that process. You know, getting right with God is fairly simple. You state your belief in Jesus, repent of your sins, confess him as your Lord and Savior. And then you take that first step of obedience in that relationship through baptism. Allow God to wash away your past defeats and embolden you with a renewed sense of purpose determined to take new territory for him. 
You know, if you have any questions about what that next step look, looks like, please come up and see Pastor Don, Don and I will be right down up front right after service. Even if you just need prayer, please come up and see us right after service. So again, thank you. You know what? Next week, Pastor Juan is back. <laughs> Pastor Juan is back. He's jumping back into the book of Ephesians. And he's got a, uh, a great series that's starting out. It's called Family. And it's on simple truths for effective parenting. So again, I want you to have a great holiday weekend, and please take some time to commemorate and remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms this Memorial Day. Won't you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for all the people that are here. And I just, I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody here right now who does not yet have a relationship with you, that I, I pray you soften their heart. I pray you open their eyes to his truth. And if there's anything that we can do as a church, Lord, to, to make an impact for you in that regard, please, please help us to do that. And Lord, help us always to remember you. Help us always to remember your sacrifice, everything that you have done in and through us and for us, the, the different people, places, and experiences that, that, that shaped us, Lord. Help us to stack stones in remembrance of you. Lord, we thank you for this time. I thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you next week.